and we're live. <laughs> That's it. Hey, what's up, guys? Dave here with the uh, PDR Workshop. Uh, once again, with another live show for you. Uh, we're here with Chris, as always, from Deadless Touch, and my mic just fell. Uh, <laughs> I just want to really quick thank our sponsors, um, Dentcraft Tools, Blem, and Mobile Tech RX for sponsoring the show, uh, allowing this to, to happen. Um, I was going to do the intro today, and uh, because Chris had the opportunity this last weekend to uh, check out the Stanliner training in Minnesota, so I was going to go ahead and uh, give a little intro. And uh, I, of course, like I told you guys last week, uh, don't have any tools. I'm in the middle of this transition, trying to get out to Chris, uh, so we can work on a couple of things that we've been, you know, have going on. Um, Chris, do you have any tools? I'm sure you uh, have one. I, I, have I hope you have one. <laughs> So I was uh, luckily lucky enough to walk away with a standliner tool with all the standliner um, fans that went to the seminar. Uh, but anyway, I uh, I I went there to get this tool, so I you know I got exactly what I wanted, and this is what they call the killer whale tail. They have a lot of different versions of this tool. Um, they have one with a different radius to kind of give you a little bit more bend. They actually actually have one that actually tapers off. Uh, so this area right here, just to show you guys, this area right here is actually tapered, um, kind of the edge right here. And so it comes completely smooth. So I thought, uh, sorry, <laughs> I thought that read. this was, uh, yeah, sorry. I thought that this was, um, this is what I've always wanted. Uh, when I work on a lot of cars, it's either the, um, what do you call it, the pirate hook or it's the this right here, the uh, killer whale tail. And so I like the fact that it's flat. I think he kind of like shaved each end. And so I don't know. I just think it's unique. Now, this is a stock item. You can get this item on their website. Uh, there are, he just alluded me that, told me that there were copies. So you make sure you just have this hologram effect right here. I don't know if you guys can see that, but um, that makes it official. So, uh, but yeah, that's the only tool I kind of walk away with. Uh, I will uh, purchase more. So but that's it. And there's a special movement with this type of tool here, this tool specifically. There is a special movement that I think uh, Stan Liner does train their techs on and, and actually how to use these tools properly. Um, I think we'll kind of get into that a little bit later. But um, there is a special movement with this tool, correct, on how to use it? Yeah, I am definitely... <laughs> You know, not as proficient as some. I think S is in the chat. He could talk a little bit about it. But uh, there were some things, some techniques that he went over uh, during the training. And I've already been trying to figure out this rolling technique. Uh, and this tool actually will uh, aid in that. And actually, I think it makes it a little easier than the pirate hook. I've been using doing it on the pirate hook, but not. You know, I really wanted to kill a whale to start doing this. Um, I'm also looking forward to actually using this tool as, you know, doing some dragging action because he's saying that you can just move a lot of metal dragging. I couldn't quite uh, test that out in the training. Um, uh, there was probably opportunity for anybody to test anything out. I was just uh, trying to take some pictures and give give a little bit of uh, <laughs> social presence yeah. to the entire entire event. So. Nice. Uh, but yeah, nice. it was uh, that dragon I know <laughs> rock rolling, I guess they call it. Yes, I, I knew there's some special techniques, especially with that type of tool there. I know that it doesn't look like your average PDR tool that you would uh, normally work with. So, no, not uh, at all. It's, yeah, it's got that wide head there. It's got a nice, uh, real curve. I mean, trying to fit in that to certain places on a vehicle uh, definitely, you know, may seem difficult. But I think if you're able to get that tool into this, you know, spot that you're working on, uh, it's probably going to be super beneficial. Yeah, so ideally I want to work on a fender because I'm still getting the movement. So I honestly don't want to take apart the door to try to, you know, maybe guess how this is going to react to that repair. But if I have a long... Do you want to perfect uh, the technique? The What'd you say? I said you want to try to perfect the technique first. Right, exactly. And so, you, you, know, um, you know, fenders, fender liners, open areas... Definitely going to be using this tool. Um, I take a lot of doors apart, so a window out is like nothing to me. Another 
15, 20 minutes to have the window out in the car. And then now I can actually, you know, put this down there and do the same rolling effect on a crease. So nice. uh, you know, it's the quick I, little pickup from the weekend. <laughs> that that's what it is. You know, I went there to buy a lot of tools. Um, and I'm hoping there were some some one off tools. So you only had uh, I guess maybe five or six of them of the little small stuff. It, it was some very unique tools and I didn't get a chance. He was raffling them off. Not really raffling, but there were so many people. It was so high demand, and he could only uh, fit but so much in his luggage at, to bring to us. And he had to have tools for us to work on, yeah. which every station, I believe, had, I don't know, maybe yeah. five or six tools on it. <laughs> There's a lot of tools that he had to bring for a training seminar. So, yeah, uh, let's. Yeah. Uh, so, for those guys just jumping in now, um, <clears throat> let's kind of preface this whole thing here. So, Chris went to the Stanliner training in Minnesota. Uh, it was held at Dent Craft uh, by Don Cavanaugh at, uh, with Dent Craft in Minnesota. And I don't know the actual town, but um, – and I know I saw from the couple of photos on social media, stuff like that, that it was a really, really good turnout. Uh, but if you could just kind of explain what uh, the what you actually signed up for. So what did they tell you uh, was going to be entailed into the whole training? And then I know that there was actually kind of a part two with the EV training uh, that you partake in, that you partook in as well, uh, how to properly power down hybrid vehicles, electric vehicles and stuff like that. So, uh, what did you sign up for? What did you, uh, you know, go out to Minnesota for? What did, how did that whole thing come about? So, uh, the, the unique thing about his tools is, you know, he always, uh, stresses the fact that you need to know how to use them. You know, it's one thing selling you a tool, but if, if you were, if you would go to MTE and buy this, you wouldn't know how to use it. I mean, you'll probably just push it like a normal tool. Yeah. But that's not how this, this is not why this tool was designed. There's no reason why there's a lot of curvature and the way the bin is. So this training it's was not specifically on how yeah. to use these tools in the proper, in the proper way. The proper way. Yes. Um, and that's what I went to training for. Um, and it all started, I did a crease. It was a, uh, it's actually a video. It's a Subaru. And I spent two hours just like, I am going to take this crease out with this pyre hook or it, oh, I'm going to be here all day. It is what it is. So I kind of forced myself to learn the pyre hook movement. Now, I would have loved to have this killer whale tail at that time, but it is what it is. And um, I just kind of got the movement of the rolling action. It took about an hour. And I did it also on that Audi, that my most recent video. Um, that he had uh, two or three, uh, three, I think two four inch or five inch creases towards the back of the fender. You kind of see a little snippet of it, but it was all like pirate hook. That thing came out clean and it came out fast. And so, towards the end of the Subaru repair, I realized that wow, this stuff is moving. <laughs> and you know, the one thing I always say about Stanliner tools is normally every tool you'll go to, you know, you start it with tape. With Stanliner tools, I don't know what's going on with these tools, but it's. It pushes <laughs> like it has tape on it, but it doesn't. So, so, so you're, you, you, <laughs> you actually had standliner tools already in your arsenal and, uh, you kind of knew how to use them, but also actually kind of didn't at the, so you don't know how to properly, I would say, use them. Um, yes. Yes. So sure. standliner you know, decided to offer a training in Minnesota here and you're like, all right, I got to go really check this out. Uh, you know, the tool, yeah, bite the billet. Yeah. I mean, it yeah, was, uh, and, it was 1600. Yeah. Cos and Thomas decided to come out and, and actually mm -hmm. show you how to properly, uh, use these. Yeah. I wasn't expecting actually cause to even be there. Kaz to be there. I was actually just inspecting. I think S is, uh, was trained by Kaz, um, I think a few years ago. And so I was expecting some of the, um, younger guys to come out and you know i know he's up in the age so he may not want to travel but uh he was there um and you know the star of the show <laughs> the man himself uh but yeah i i paid i i immediately reached out to the people because i'm you know a procrastinator so i re <laughs> i quickly reached out to the people i'm like hey it's about four weeks left uh is there any open slots <laughs> yeah 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 just go ahead and get your ticket and i said okay all right. Actually, was so excited. I charged the car twice. <laughs> so, oh, yikes. <laughs> so I had to call him and be like, hey, can I get a refund? So, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I was very excited to go out, especially to see Don. Don has uh, helped me out tremendously. Just overall, just nice guy. You know, his words of encouragement to me have been, you know, great. 
Um, and to the industry is what it seems like. You know, he connects with almost everybody in the industry. So uh, to see Don Shop, you know, you got Steven over there and you got Q over there. Um, so it was just, uh, you know, um, was it Gray Duck Dent Repair? John, Dent yeah. Repair, John. So I'm like, wow, all these guys are in one place. I made the right decision because I didn't know. I just scheduled. I just signed up. So once I yeah, did, you I didn't know. actually know who was going to be there. And <laughs> yeah. yeah, when you go to MTE, yeah. it's one thing. And when you go to some of these smaller seminars, uh, trainings, classes, meetups, uh, media events, stuff like that, you don't really know who's going to be there. MTE, you know pretty much everyone who's anyone who actually <laughs> enjoys what we do and cares yeah. about PDR is going to be at Mobile Tech Expo. Uh, so you yeah. decided that, okay, well, I'm going to go to the standliner training. I really don't know who's going to be there, uh, but I'm going to go for the sole purpose of really how to, to learn how to use these tools uh, just because they're so unique. you know. And I had the pleasure of being able to try them a couple weeks ago when I was out by you. Uh, I completely understand the training necessary for these types of tools. Uh, because they are so unique. Uh, it's a totally different method of, of pushing uh, with these compared to, I think, just a standard direct uh, push rod that you would get maybe from another company. Uh, so you get there, you show up, everyone's kind of in this room. Uh, you yeah. know, what are you, what's, what's kind of going on? What are they, you know, what's what's the cadence of the whole uh, training? I mean, is it just more literature? Is it really, really hands-on? Is it a mix of both? So, so we get, we get there and, and, and uh, you know, they have, they, they, they shove you with these packets and in the packet you get uh, his glue pulling tab and he, uh, and the um, glue, his special glue that hasn't even hit the States yet. And he gives you a nice little handbook and I think a sticker and some standliner kind of accessories and, and stuff like that. Um, and kind of everybody, like I'm looking around, seeing who I know, <laughs> you know, you know, you don't I'm know. Looking for a familiar people. face. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and excuse me, Harry from um, flat iron, flat, flat line or flat iron dent repair. I don't want to butcher it, but Harry, uh, I knew he was coming. So I kind of linked with him a little bit and then just uh, Thomas gets started. Like I really love the fact that he started on time and he kept, the routine he was able to create audibles when need be and that's when he saw guys kind of lingering around and that's when he was like let's it's time to teach the next uh the next technique but you know he basically prefaced the entire thing by saying you're going you, i want you to come in here as an open mind that's the only way you're going to learn um my my dad's techniques are unique uh they're different but they definitely will benefit you if you you know give it a chance and you're here, here, you're here today to learn this. So keep an open mind and, you know, that's basically what it is. So everybody, I, I mean, you, it just seems like everybody's kind of like, <sighs> like, like, okay, let's, let's, let's go back to day one of training. <laughs> Cause no, that's what uh, it was, man. <laughs> there's no ego involved anymore. Right. So it's like, no everyone's, ego, on an even, everyone's on an even playing field. Yes, everyone I is there it. to, I loved it. who doesn't, you know, when you go to maybe Dent Olympics or maybe some of these other things, you have uh, technicians, you have years, right? Just experience. Right. So there are going to be better than some. But here, no matter what year you were or, you know, year of tech, if you're a brand new tech to a seasoned tech, everyone's still mm -hmm. on the same playing field learning this new technique, which could probably be really fun because everyone's kind of in that same like back to square one, like learning experience. Yeah. And, I'm probably I'm like, I'm sure that was probably like a good motivator for everyone to kind of just come together. Like, Hey, how you doing that? How did you, yeah, you know, yeah. kind of when of you first started training again. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so I, I, I want to back up a little bit, uh, before we got started on the training aspect of it, Bruce from, I think ding busters. Um, I always see his, uh, his, his Instagram account, but I never really see him. So I was, I didn't know, you know I didn't put a face to an uh, Instagram IG account, but anyway, <laughs> he was awarded, a gold uh, certified tech and just the look on his face, you can tell it was a big deal. And like everybody I think was kind of like, wow, like this is a big deal. And just talking to uh, one of the guys that went to train, it seems like he's only awarded 12 people this award. Maybe that's the 13th or maybe that's the 12th guy, but uh, it seems like it was a big accomplishment. So shout outs to Bruce from ding busters. Congratulations. But you just saw that. Wow. This is a big deal for this one gentleman. He spent a lot of time with these tools, a lot of techniques. You know, he went all the way to get trained. And then you knew this was serious. You know, like it, you knew it was time to learn when you saw that.
<laughs> yeah. So, so yeah, that was that was pretty amazing. So you guys were going from just station to station, learning these new techniques. Um, were all the tools available there for you guys to use? I know they have yes. uh, kind of a unique yes. selection. Um, and I think like you said earlier that there were other tools that were available, but not actually for purchase. Um, yes. But yes. the ones that you were working with, they are were or they were the ones they are the ones that are available online. Yes, most of the tools we're working on. I don't think there is one tool. I think there was one off that he kind of said, "Hey, try this out" because of just the way the angle was or whatever. But um, most of the tools they call them, you know, stock items. Most of the tools stock items, and uh, we went over uh, a couple of main techniques in his arsenal, right? And it was dragging samurai, rolling, glue pulling, and then needling i think but i may have i kind of wrote it down just to took it taking notes but i think it was just dragging samurai rolling and glue pulling s is on here so maybe he can elaborate a little bit more about what needling is i might be off on that one <laughs> so but anyway those are the techniques that we went to so we went on i think it's rolling first then we went on dragging i didn't really care for dragging too much meaning i sucked at dragging <laughs> i was real good with rolling yeah, and I was horrible with the dragon technique, uh, with his tools, and then samurai technique. I really understood that, but um, but yeah, I can go into somewhat detail. I want to respectfully not share too much information about the class, but definitely want to kind of encourage people to to go to just open your mind up to more techniques and stuff like that. So I know you got a bunch of questions for me, Dave. <laughs> and if anybody in yeah. the chat has questions, go ahead. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, I haven't really been able to talk to you since you got back about the training. So it's just this is kind of nice for me as well. <laughs> uh, but what was some of the feedback from some of the other techs there? I know there's a lot of heavy hitters there. Um, what yep. was kind of mm -hmm. just the overall, um, you know, just the atmosphere? What was that like with everyone there? What was, you know, was everyone really friendly? Was everyone kind of just getting down on themselves trying to learn this stuff? Was everyone like, ah, this is, oh, you know, not for me? I mean, like, what was it like? I mean, you nailed it, Dave. It was the ego was completely gone. It was left at the door, um, and we were just there to learn. Everybody sucked at what we were learning, so there was no, no one was better. So there was no need for ego. Yeah. Um, we went and we talked about, you know, the tools. What, how many tools you have? How long you've been in? I mean, a guy would touch a tool and will, you know, start practicing, and you know, it was hand on hand, you know, a one on one training, right? So a a. a a trainer will be right beside me, pretty much guiding your hands so you can get the movement right. Everybody had this opportunity. I mean, countless amount of times. I mean, you almost got tired. You had to go stop and get water and stuff. <laughs> so anyway, um, and so with that, you couldn't see if anybody was skilled or not. Like you, you couldn't tell the experience based on what they were doing. So again, no one got it out right. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, rolling was something I've already was used to. So I felt real comfortable. I felt like, oh, okay, I'm, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. And then that was a quick, like, you're doing it wrong. Do it this way. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. I didn't know. And then as soon as I got a little tweaked a little bit here, uh, S, um, actually used this tool to help me rolling. That was the first station I went to and, um, on a fender. And he was showing me how to kind of really roll this, uh, killer whale tail. So. That was basically it. It was no ego. The entire room was uh, ready to learn. I mean, Mike Toledo was there, and he was right beside me trying to figure this out. Um, I mean, top guys. I mean, 20, 30-year techs was in there. I mean, Don was the same way, just right there trying to learn uh, and trying to organize this wonderful event with the help of, you know, the Standliner crew. So, yeah, yeah. The best best training environment you could possibly be in. Like hands down, I would have probably paid a thousand dollars more if I knew what was was it about. Like it was an amazing event. The networking, the the, the actual training was was great. Um, and so Dent Fixer asked how long it was. It was so it was a two day course, and then the next day was the um, EV certification. So and you that was down these EV classes. That was the also next day. Optional yeah. as well, correct? Yeah, so you, yeah, it was optional. I think it was an additional like six fifty, and that's put on by Anson PDR uh, with Vince. So Vince was the teacher, um, and you had to go through Anson to get your tickets for that one. Nice. So yeah, and Tommy was asking, being new to the industry, would the standliner tool and technique be the way to go? <laughs> I would probably say yes. Um, 
I'm really if someone had yeah. zero experience. They do nothing yes. about PDR. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I mean, you're telling a guy that's been doing this for 14 years and <laughs> been pushing this way. I would say yes. Will it be the only technique that you need to learn? I would say no. Uh, the one thing about these tools is accessibility becomes key for a lot of these tools. And if you want to work on a ladder in and out, then, um, you know, the door rods and all that stuff will be the most beneficial. I'm not going outside just restocking a full of stand line of tools. But I'm telling you one thing, if I can get access to this tool that, you know, with this tool, it will be the tool that I take that done out and nothing else. Uh, I was talking to you, Dave, about it just, you know, earlier today. And I said, they're, the way they do it is different. Like everybody can take a den out. Probably everybody watching can take a den out um, and be very proficient at it. But, but the way he is explaining it to you, you can tell it's just going to bring less fatigue over time um, on your body. And I think that's something that people overlook. Uh, you know, I was saying a lot of these tools were made back in the day. It's just literally get access, push. And what he decided was saying, get access, push as less as you, you know, with less effort. <laughs> so it's a different, so he's building the tools for longevity of your body. And so, yes, the, uh, I mean, this is, I don't know his age. I don't want to say, but I would, eh. I don't want to throw him under the bus if he's not 70, but, <laughs> you know, I know a lot of dent guys and after about 55, 60, they hurt. I mean, their body is aching. They do not want to push. Um, but you know, this so man these tools going, allow for the tool to do more of the work rather than the yeah. tech himself. So you're not using yeah. your body. That's actually pushing the tool. Your body is yeah. pushing or the tool is doing the work rather than more of the, the tech himself, your body. There's a video, right? It's insane. So the way this is curved, he puts it in the door and he rocks it like this. And then all of a sudden he's like this. And the whole tool is just steadily rocking at the same time. And all you have to do is just put your hand out, put your hand on it and keep rocking it. And it's, it's just taking the creases. <laughs> it's freaking crazy. <laughs> it's absolutely crazy. But I mean, the passion that, you know, Kaz has in his, in his son and actually the whole crew, you just it brings like joy when you when you talk to them. Um, but you know it, it's not the only tool you got to keep, man. Like it's just it is a is a stout technique. You know I, I love it because it's something maybe because it's something new also. You know, the industry is like you know it's the same tool, maybe better handle, maybe a better kick. You know okay yeah it adds a little you know adds a, a lot of redundancy of within PDR yeah, tools exactly. But this is something like completely off the wall, and I think when he thinks about it, it's like what can I push, you know, all day? Like how can I push and not be fatigued at the end of the day? So he has this um, samurai effect and it's basically like inner blending, I guess. And so he designed the samurai too. I believe you can only get it if you go to his training, but it has like a counterweight to it uh, is what it seems like. I can feel something kind of shaking in it. And it's basically, I mean, you're just guiding it. You're just bouncing it like a basketball, man. And so, uh, it's, I'm sorry, I'm reading the comments, but it's, uh, it was a unique style. <laughs> I think we have some questions here. I don't know. Uh, planning more. Yeah. Events. So was, yeah. So just asking if anyone, they were planning more events, um, later on, if they mentioned anything about it. Yeah. Now, if, if you're new, you definitely gotta get the basics of PDR. Uh, yeah. So you gotta know what you're pushing for sure. It's a little bit more than just tool access and, and the way to use the tool. I mean, you got to read light. You got to do a lot of stuff. It's it's a little bit bigger than just tool access. But it's more complex, you know. So there was just one thing you had to, like, take away and say, like, hey, Chris, why should I go to the Standliner training? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know, I don't want to make this entire, like, live show about, like, just how wonderful the Standliner event. But, right, you know, of it really course. It was amazing. Um you know, I just want to give a lot of insight about why you would go. But the one thing that I liked on this course, and it seems like they're going to tailor it a little differently, was I was amazed that he was uh, actually bringing out, you know, his technique with glue pulling. And, you know, without sharing too much, uh, we basically, he put a glue tab on and we all got, you know, was able to have turns with trying to remove this uh, glue tab. And it's not like he reapplied this glue tab. It's one glue tab. People were 
pulling it in funky different angles. So it had all the opportunity to come off this car or this panel at that particular time. And people were just lining up trying to take turns. And I mean, I, I did it. You'll see the video. I was fatigued as crap. And we're not talking about a little two pound, three pound hammer. I mean, this thing was like a seven, eight pound slayer. And it's, I mean, we were ripping the, uh, the, the door, uh, skin off. <laughs> you know, I mean, it was crazy. <laughs> And so, it, and you know, a, in that, yeah, go ahead. Let's say this is a special glue that they're coming out with. So, of course, you know, from their standpoint, it's it's no other glue on the market. I don't know because I haven't used it yet. Uh, visually, it looks like the same glue that uh, is out, you know, Glexo or something like that. Uh, not the cold glue, but the, the hot glue. It's like a, you know, regular glue. But um, he said it was industrial strength, German industrial strength glue. You know, I think that terminology has been tossed around a lot. But uh, we'll see. He showed us. You know, I mean, he pulled the pack right out. You know, the glue that he he pretty much um, you know, gave us, and he started to literally build his glue tab because he does a, a decent amount of prep work for his glue tab. And then he showed us. You know, that took about thirty minutes. Then he showed us how how that pulled. So you see, it's like S is trying to do it. I know you're playing around with your mic over there, Dave. <laughs> Yeah, it just keeps falling here. Um, so, I mean, so that was two days of, of the whole standliner training, really how to learn how to use these tools. Like we said, they're yeah. super unique uh, in the way that they're made. Uh, they're made with uh, – there's thought behind these tools on how to actually of use course, them. There, there's passion behind these tools. Um, and I know that they're super shiny, that they're super flashy. They're super unique looking. Um, you know, as someone said – would this be, you know, something for a, a new uh, technician who's trying to get into this industry? Would this be a, a good tool for them? Now, being a seasoned technician, trying to learn a new technique, uh, how is that kind of, you know, messing with you, you know, the way you push? Uh, do you have to, like, kind of stop the bad habits of, of direct pushing and actually, like, switch to, like, their technique as you're using it? Yeah, I mean, great question. Um, yeah, you got to force yourself to keep an open mind. Uh, I think that's just for anything, you know. Um, you always have to be in a constant state of, you know, learning or at least being, a you know, kind of a sponge, be able to take in knowledge. Uh, so as long as you're doing that, a seasoned techni technician can kind of figure it, not figure it out. You got to get you got to have a little bit of direction. I think he has a lot of videos that explain certain things. I haven't watched them, so I kind of completely went in there blind. But there's a lot of, uh, t you know, skilled guys that will help you kind of, uh, you know, with the technique and stuff like that. You kind of learn visually. Um, but I will tell you, during the event, the season techs were getting corrected on this on the same stuff that you will probably correct, like a, a, a two week tech. Like your yeah. stance is wrong, your your position <laughs> of your hand is wrong, and I'm just like, golly, like yeah. this is <laughs> intense. But that's what's gonna ultimately get you, not just the best results, that's but the best results right. with those tools. Yeah. But he's like, put your finger here, rest your hand, don't hold it tight. Use this as your as your stability, and then just rock it. You know, kind of. And he said, with this, it doesn't allow that flow of the rock. You know, it's just those are things that you are trying to train a one year. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, a one week tech to do hand position, stance, weight. The only thing that they had to, the only thing that they'd have to train was seeing the dead. <laughs> like, yeah, the only F, thing, everything you know, else is like. <laughs> and S is here in the chat. Uh, S E S here. Uh, he is also a trainer for Standliner. Yeah. And he said that, uh, you know, in a way, the newer you are, the more advantage you have, which I completely agree. And that veterans have more muscle memory to overcome. So, I mean, that, and that makes complete yeah. sense. Uh, I yeah, think as I techs, agree. as seasoned techs, we are kind of habitual. I know I am in the way I use my tools and what tools I grab for. Uh, I know if I were to have this, a couple of these in my arsenal, I'm going to have to kind of pause and take that step back real quick before I actually go to use these tools because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. they are so unique. Um I just one more question before we, I kind of want to ask a little bit about the EV training. So is this the one tool? Like if I were to ask you, what's the one tool you would want is the, is that the one right there that you're holding? 
the one it would be if you had to pick one stand liner tool. But I guess, you know, I don't know if you can because they kind of yeah. all have their own different, yeah. you know, ways so to use them. So there's something called a raised snake, a raised yeah. snake, uh, rounded. I like that tool. I just started to play around. Actually, S actually coached me through the sharper version. I was struggling with it when, I, you know, on my own. And I do have the sharper version, but now he told me exactly how to use that tool. Uh, so the Ray Snake, both versions, the rounded and the sharp one is pretty good. The Pirate Hook, and then obviously the the Killer Whale. Those are the tools um, that I would get. You know, if you wanna, if you want something a little cheaper, they make a, um, I think a door tool or a crane tool, but it's a mini. Uh, obviously, it won't work for all circumstances, but when you do get that mini in there, you know, go from like maybe a, a, a what is it, like a dent craft or a blim, um, kind of like brace tool, and then switch to the standliner tool. You that will kind of show you the difference, or at least let you experience the difference. But if you get like a, I think if you get a um, pirate hook and you really don't know what to do you're going to get a little frustrated with it i think so some of the most basic tools just to show you how well it pushes and you know how it doesn't create highs when it pushes or high spots then that would that would help that would help out so ray snakes are probably the first tools you know what s could probably speak on this honestly i you know i we we're trying to bring them into the show maybe we'll have them on uh a little later uh this this year but uh, S could probably speak on what the best tools because S has a the, like me, he has some standliner and he has some regular tools. And since he was trained by standliner, I believe he was actually trained by Marty too. But S can explain, you know, he was trained by multiple people. Nice. So, so you went to the two day standliner training, uh, and then there was a third day as well for EV training, correct? Yeah. So and so um, I don't and I don't know if you know the listeners here know uh, EV training. Uh, it's going to be actually becoming more prevalent in, in in what we do. I know that. So uh, kind of listen up for for the importance yeah. of this training. I know that, it, you know, you were kind of telling me a little bit earlier today. I'm like, oh, wow. Like this is yeah. actually uh, something that is going to be either required. And if it's not required, you better really understand the importance of uh, this, this type of training here, uh, yeah. this EV training. Yeah, so let, we'll talk a little bit about the EV. Um, really, like I said, really what you said, because uh, some of the things that I mentioned. But uh, again, Anson put on the training, uh, administrated by uh, Vince um, from Anson PDR. And obviously it was at Don's space, so we didn't have to go anywhere. Um, but, you know, it's basic knowledge of how to power down a hybrid vehicle. Um, I went in there with the expectations is, you know, I just I want to get the information. You know, there's one way EV that I... EV being an electric vehicle, correct? Yeah, so electric vehicle. So that even includes the hybrids. It's so not Teslas, just the Tesla. So Teslas, Prius hybrids. Is. Yeah, all of them. Yeah. And so uh, even the cars that stop and start are considered a hybrid. I forget there's like a micro hybrid, they call it. So it's just, it only has uh, something in it for the stop and start feature as you uh, brake or, and slow down. But I, you know, I went in there just to get the cert. I do a lot of Teslas. I had. You know, a customer asked me, hey, do you know how to power down my car? And I'm like, well, for this repair, I don't think I need to power down. Your power wire doesn't go in this direction. But I wish I would have told him, yes, <laughs> I do. But this, that, and the third. I had to kind of, <laughs> you know, allude to the fact that, no, I, you know. But I yeah, can, you just kind of run with it there right there yeah. at that point. <laughs> so, yeah. so um, but anyway, um, Vince goes off and talks about the danger. You know, everything has a danger. So I was kind of not really paying attention to it. But there was one video that he showed, and, well, he was talking about the AC and DC, and obviously uh, DC is direct current, AC is alternating current, I believe, you know? And anyway, um, but he was saying how, which is pulses, and so with the with the um, hybrid cars, there's actually a 200-volt battery in the uh, in whatever location the batteries are, and obviously that varies per, you know, per size, you know, for, for what the size of the vehicle is and stuff like that power that it needs to output but anyway if you touch that you're dead you're toast you don't get the chance to you think maybe um you'll be able to get pulled off of it and that's not the case uh since we're like 90 percent water you literally just stand there and cook it, it it actually shocks your your nervous system and you you literally just tighten up 
you cannot move at all. So you just sit there and just cook. So I was like, okay, that's pretty bad. Because, <laughs> you know, I've been zapped by like 110 kind of in the house. <laughs> yeah. I've been zapped by 110. You know, it gives you, woo, I'm not touching that anymore. But yeah. uh, you can still pull yourself off and do that because it's constantly fluctuating. The, the current is going up and down. It's alternating, on the yeah. TV. Yeah, it's alternating on the, D, on the, the on, DC. On the direct current, direct voltage. That's it. A direct current. Yeah. That joint, that's it. It's just it's steady. It doesn't give you that option to pull off. And so I'm like, yo, this is good. <laughs> so when you're crazy. sticking metal this tools into an area that has direct yes. current, uh, and yes. you clip a wire, clip a box, clip something in there with this tool, there is the uh possibility that you could really hurt yourself slash yeah. I guess die. Like death is the yo, other it was, it like, was serious <laughs> dead, yo. So I'm like, okay, got to watch out for that. And what really scared me was the, the and I'll, I want to share this with you guys. It's the Kia, oh, I think like the Sorento, and not Sorento, the, uh, what is S the Kia? Like the sedan version. I think Optima, Optima maybe. Well, that'd be Hyundai. Um, you got Hyundai Santa oh, Fe Hyundai. or something like that. <laughs> now, this is a Kia. It was the hybrid version of whatever their um, kind of mid-size Yeah, Sorento, sedan. yeah, I think so. Yeah, one of them two. And anyway, so this is Vince's video. So, you know, kudos to Vince for sharing. This woke me up. Like, this is a part of the class where I was like, okay, I need to take this serious because this is crazy. So there's a fender dent. I posted Dave just right on the body line, kind of right where the fender and bumper meet, just that, you know, body line, kind of accent line. And, you know, smashed. Well, Vince shows. He, like he said, he particularly goes in there with his little poke tool. And he's like, oh, I'm not getting on this dent. So he pulls the cover all down and there's a orange wire, which is, you know, high voltage in this area, you know, in the States. And it's an orange wire running alongside of the fender. And I'm just like, Whoa, you know how many times I just go in there and just he man with a pick tool or something like that. It, it could have been a sharp dip that you go in there with a pick tool. And I'm like, yeah, we would have been cooked. <laughs> like no lie. Yeah. It would have been done. And so I said, God. So, you know, obviously he pirated down. Jamming a flat stuff. bar yeah. in there. <laughs> so I just said, man. And then, you know, with, I said, okay, how durable is these cables? Because obviously they're putting it in there. There's no way that these cables can be like, they got to be encoded in like steel beams. No, it's literally just like plastic. If you go in there pretty aggressive, now nah, maybe not with this tool, but if you go in there pretty aggressive with a pick tool or something sharp, you will get past that protective layer. And that is it. Metal with your hand with a tool, you're gonna be ashes. <laughs> so, <laughs> yo, uh, yeah, I don't know which key, I think it's the Optima. Um, but anyway, um, be mindful of these hybrid cars, guys. I do not want anybody on the news, especially a PDR guy, uh, that just flat out just didn't know. So, I thought we spent a little bit of time, yeah, it was a hybrid. Um, it was the driver's side. They have a, a um, charging point on the back side of the fender uh, where they where you charge the car up. And then, obviously, the fender. I mean, this is a typical dent. You know, I think Dave was down here. He did one on a Mazda. This is a standard. This is – people see this on a lot all the, all the time. Yeah. So, in the video, I believe he said it was on PDR Tool Time Vents. So if you reach out to him, I'll probably send you the video. It's his personal video. I actually caught him off guard, and he's a, an instructor. Um, but he just wasn't aware of it. I want to leave you guys with uh, – well, not, we're not packing it up yet, but hopefully – Yeah, Sorry, I mean, when you, when, no, when you told me that story, uh, <laughs> that definitely opened up my eyes to, uh, you know, the importance of this training, you know <clears> – <throat> I do work on a lot of high-end vehicles, uh, Tesla's being the main one, but, uh, and there's always challenges. Like I've dealt with Rolls Royces that just have huge, you know, windshield wiper uh, reservoirs and the fenders and stuff like that. Uh, but actual high voltage running through a panel is completely different than anything else that you could possibly either touch or break or something like that. Uh, and so for me, when you did, like I said, when when you told me about this, I was like, "Oh wow, this is actually something that's really, really important, and that we need to stress to everyone else." Uh, just because the it's getting not that hybrids are becoming more prevalent, but there is that chance. I mean, if I was walking a lot and one of the cars on there happened to be a hybrid, I'm not going to think twice 
uh, before, I probably wouldn't even think twice just to shove a tool into whatever part of that car that I need to, like you said. Right. And if you have high voltage running through a fender, uh, that's something that where, yeah, I probably would have stuck a tool in there and it would have been no problem. And next thing you know, I'm just cooking right there on the lot. <laughs> exactly. And, so. and there's, you know, he didn't show the video because it's too graphic, but, you know, he said, you know, there's been times if, you know, people have it and you, people try to take a two by four to break their arm, you know, to pull them away. It's done. You, they can't even break you off away from this stuff. You know, Anson sells a plastic hook that seems to do well, I guess. But I mean, you're 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 cooked. You're done. Yeah, and so, so straight lines. At, I'm sorry. So straight lines had asked, "Can you just wear rubber gloves?" And uh, Q and Excel <laughs> were able to kind of reply yeah. here and said, uh, "Rubber gloves aren't just going to do it. You, know, you need either yeah. special gloves that are rated to a certain voltage. Uh, yeah, I think they're saying a thousand, thousand volt, thousand volt rubber yeah. gloves, uh, which I know I don't carry, and so." I mean, but still, I think powering down, learning how to really power down these vehicles in the proper way is the way yeah. to do it. I mean, not trying and to it, get, so get around, no, like, not cutting quarters. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was trying to share an app with you guys. I'll try to put it in like the show notes when anybody's listening to it. But this app actually shares it. I mean, Matt may talk about it and hopefully Q may have it. Um, and I know Excel has it, uh, but there's an app that you pay $2.99 and it tells you where at least up to the 2018 where all the wires are ran, uh, where the battery is located. And I think it shows the proper procedure or at least the manufacturer procedures of like where the uh, pin is that you need to pull out to, um, to power down the vehicle. Um, so yeah, you know, it is important to go to that class. I don't want to, uh, you know, I'm sharing this information cause I, I value you guys safety. Uh, again, I don't want anybody to be on here and on, on, uh, Dent, Dent Tech's only page, and we're over here, you know, uh, doing a Go GoFundMe account for you because you know <laughs> you didn't want to, you know, unplug the EV card. That would be, that would be, you know, disappointing. So I'm doing my, uh, you know, my share to give back to you guys and add value by saying, please download that app. Uh, hopefully, uh, Steve um, Excel Dent Repair has the link, uh, you know, the the name of that app. But it's like two ninety nine. Well worth it if you work on any hybrid vehicles. Um, for you so yeah you can yank the pin <laughs> yank the pin yeah but uh but yeah it's like a little i guess fuse i guess they call it or whatever but but yeah so that was yeah. the ev course so i'm now uh at least that's what vince told me i haven't got any paperwork but i'm now how long was it two. was it a full day no we were done at about two o'clock the class was very we were very focused i mean I think I'm telling you, most of the guys are from Stanliner. We were already coming from a very focused class. Uh, I mean, it was a no-nonsense type class, um, but we were very focused in the EV. Um, I don't know the gentleman's name, but we had a little study group <laughs> and uh, helped me out a lot to get through the test. <laughs> so nice. Yeah, first time ever doing like a study study group. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I thought that was fun. Uh, a real quick frogman here is asking, so what's the difference between the PDR finesse tool, which is the 226 he's talking about specifically, uh, and then okay. versus stand liner door tool? So the 226 kind of has that yeah. soft bend with the sharp tip, and I think they have a left and a right on those. <clears throat> yeah. And then versus stand liner door tool. Uh to be perfectly honest, I'm probably the wrong man to ask for that because I don't know how to use the door tools from Stanliner. I tried to use it as a, as a regular door tool and I am not, I'm falling short, short when it comes to that. There is some incidents where that door tool, like the hooking action does work very well, but I'm not using it like a door tool. So, uh, I almost consider it two different tools. Again, S would be able to tell you way more yeah, than he, me on that. And yeah, he was able to cut a cut. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, I know the guy, um, there was a guy that told me about that he has a set and he said he rarely uses it. So I don't know if the PDR finesse and I don't know why every tech is different. I, you know, Dave comes over, does the exact same repair and has completely different tools than me. Uh, so, I mean, we're all going for the job. We all, when we work with each other, we're probably all figuring out like me, maybe, maybe that's uh speeding him up. Maybe that's not, maybe that's something, you know, so we're, we're getting little snippets, but you know, Dave has a bunch of CarePoint, a bunch of uh, uh, Drew's tools. I have none. I have no Drew's tools, and I have one CarePoint tool. So I guess there's many ways that you can skin a cat. But, uh, but yeah, yeah. I, I, <laughs> I, I then now, 
I think S is talking about they have a door tool, which is a right and left that he that he showed us. It literally looks like you know a hook. It's a hook tool. It's like a standard hook tool, but it has a roll on one side instead of like okay. the straight. So, so yeah, there were only four pairs. Um, and those fair, I didn't, um, win <laughs> the option to buy those four pairs. So I don't <laughs> have anything to show you, but yeah, he does have them. And he, I've been trying to kind of, uh, persuade him to keep it because his tool in the similar, similar, uh, fashion of a, of a standard tool. That makes nice. sense. I can really compare the metal and stuff like that. Cause it's hard. I mean, how are you comparing this tool to what? <laughs> you're not you know? and that's you know and that's kind of what i wanted to to kind of go over with this whole um show today because i know that these tools are super unique and that special training kind of i don't want to say is required but it's definitely a super helpful on how to actually use these tools in the proper way that they were meant to be used by yeah. the creators they have their way of using these tools in their head and they use them i think daily and so now they're offering that to everyone else and you know, it's us as seasoned techs, like you said, to kind of open your mind when you get to that training and really learn how these are used because they can make your repairs cleaner, faster. Uh, you know, it's only going to make you more money in the in the long run if you're able to really learn how to hone in and properly use these stand liner tools. Yeah, and I mean, uh, I think one of the reasons why I'm such a decent tech. I'm not the best tech, but uh, such a decent tech um, is because I open a mind. I literally go in there and be like, okay, I'm going to get leverage, execute that first. Uh, obviously, you know, RNIs and all that stuff. And then try to fit, you know, what I think, you know, the biggest tool in there, or what I think is fair. I don't know until I got to see how metal moves. But if you keep an open mind, um, you almost can't lose. You know, I, I think you will, you would definitely learn something in, in every uh, job that you do so and, and then with tools I, I think i shared this story i think about four or five years ago i just was stuck in my tools now nah, i don't need the tool i'm i'm taking out dents what's what's the point of this tool and i had a i had a uh i had a dent it was an older like an 01 uh tahoe right there where the bumper the rear bumper that, that little, when you take the tail light, you have good access, but you have no tool to actually get leverage. You know, some people put a two by four and all that stuff in there so you can gain access. You know what I'm talking about? Like the corner. Yep. So, you know, I got frustrated. I did one and I was like, you know what? Screw this. I saw, I think, uh, Sal posted a picture of how he did one. And he was like, done in 45. And I just spent three and a half hours on it <laughs> and was fighting. My whole side was, was just hurting. And I said, I'm done. I'm going to buy that tool just for that repair. And didn't touch it. Literally, tool sitting there for eight months. Finally get the exact same repair, you know, the exact same job. And I said, ah, I got the right tool, boy. I'm about to nail it. And lie to you not, 45 minutes, I was done. <laughs> and so I started thinking, how can I? I started watching uh, uh, Sal and figure out how I can incorporate this tool in more and more repairs. I still love my dent dial. But uh, I think the Stayliner tools um, currently stole my heart on on certain repairs. I mean, I, <laughs> they don't fit every, you know. They of course, like they don't fit everywhere, right? So, of course, you know, to give you guys a content, uh, I probably use the Stayliner tools about twenty percent of my jobs. You know, just to be you know real with you guys. But it's you know it's a new tool, so I'm happy when I use it. I'm excited when I use it. Uh, but uh, it's literally only currently right now about 20% of what I what I use. Um, and like you like, said in the beginning of the show, you're still learning it, how to use yeah. them properly. So obviously that's probably, you know, taking away from how much they're actually used. Uh, when you're <clears throat> when you get a vehicle in or a customer drops their car off, you're, you know, as a business owner, as a technician, your main focus is like, all right, let me get this done. <laughs> Not let me learn a new technique right here on the spot. So uh, I think, yeah. you know, that probably has something to do with it, but you know, there's definitely going to be times where I know I'm going to be playing around with these tools and I'm like, man, I'm <laughs> thankful ahead. that, you know, that these are available, <laughs> that we have these cause, uh, because, yeah. because they're, they're, they're so unique and they're probably going to get the job done. You know, like I said, faster, yeah. cleaner, um, than maybe some of the other tools. So, uh, but yeah, that, yeah. you know, we just wanted to kind of recap over this stand liner training yeah. and, and I want to be and very, how that clear, went you know, for you. 
don't go right out and spend two thousand dollars on stand line of tools. I'm I'm pretty sure he would be grateful about that. But uh, you know, just talking with Thomas and talking to with his dad, I mean, he really doesn't want his tools to just sit on the ground and not do anything. He wants you to use his tools. So hopefully he's okay with me saying, but you know, just don't go run and spend two thousand dollars on stand line of tools without really saying that you're gonna kind of keep an open mind and, and really and learn, learn the, how to use the technique. Tools. You know, uh, you know, and it also comes down to uh, you know, if you're just a lot guy, you know, these tools may not be uh, as beneficial um, because it does take a lot of uh, RNIs. You know, you have to have a lot of access. But, you know, it's, if you're doing already big repairs and it's a two day repair, one day repair, you're going to take a lot of stuff apart apart. Then you may want to invest, invest in a set of uh, stand liner tools. Um, again, the Ray Snake is almost like a double bend. So it it's multi. Uh, that has a multi-use, so you can use it with hail and stuff like that. So you'll never like not use that tool. Um, so that's why I recommend the the, um, the race snakes for the beginner guys to try to get used to um, that. The I way it pushes, how it pushes, and the yeah, way that mm -hmm. tip kind of pushes behind that metal. Yeah. Yep. And so, yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. This would be your first tool, but because I love how to do fenders. And I get more opportunity to work on a fender without RNIing much. That's why this is my learning tools. That yeah. makes sense. It does. Uh, but yeah, Ray Snake is literally the close second or, excuse me, right alongside of, of this one. So Nice. Yep. Well, guys, there you have it. That is the uh, <laughs> Stanliner Training Seminar Recap uh, with Chris. Oh, Lee. Lee just came <laughs> in. <laughs> yes, he did. <laughs> and so... <clears throat> Uh, for you guys, I don't know when, if there are going to be any more uh, later this year, that is probably TBD. <laughs> uh, I'm sure it'll be all on social media when, if there is going to be, when and if there is going to be another one. Um, we did stress the importance of the electrical vehicle training. I know, Chris, after our conversation, that it will now <laughs> be at the top of my list to go ahead and get that done. So. Uh, we want to thank you guys for, for tuning in. We also want to thank our sponsors, Mobile Tech RX, Blem Tool Company, and Dentcraft Tools for, uh, for you know, sponsoring the show and allowing us to go ahead and deliver this content to you guys. Uh, and I just want real quick one more thing. Chris, I see two books on there. Do you want to just kind of chime in on what those two are right there? <laughs> just real quick. Uh, you don't have to go into yeah. detail. I just kind of, you know, I know yeah, we go back so... and forth sometimes of what we're reading. So I just want to see what you have there. Yeah, I, I really think this is a great book, guys. Um, I, I'm enjoying this read. I'm on three chapters in, and it's uh, John Maxwell, Leader Shift. I don't know if it's reversed. It's, it looks reversed nope, on my end. It but... shows, yeah. <sighs> I, am, I am in love with this book right now. Uh, so... Uh, if you guys read it before me, but I'm 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 doing a chapter a day, but uh, it's it's a good book, and you know, uh, this is a book that I got. I don't know if you guys into like rap or anything <laughs> like that, but Nipsey Hussle. Uh, this is one of his favorite books, and it's the way of the superior man, uh, and it's just mastering um, challenges of work and and and, and sp your spiritual mastery. So. I don't know, maybe boring to some, but if you're in the book, sorry, if you're in the like podcasts and stuff, John Maxwell is like the staple of leadership and, and uh, all that stuff. Um, I think leadership and like marketing and mentoring. So I can't grow unless I can mentor guys better and help guys in a better sense. And I can't help guys unless my mind is right. And so this is kind of a, a refreshing kind of book to, uh, to help me grow. Uh, so that I can continue to keep adding value. That's what it's all about, Dave, is, is adding value to the community. And I think we we sh we try to express that as much as we possibly can. Uh, you know, we're, 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 we're not in the in crowd. We don't try to create drama or any of that stuff. Uh, we literally get on here and me and Dave talk about, and uh, Dave, you could, you know, you could probably answer this but i call you every day and i say how can we add more value dave <laughs> and he said chill chill it's okay well there's uh, only 24 hours in the day so, <laughs> so but we always constantly uh want to add value to the industry because we feel like it's something that you know we both uh are are compact you know passionate in, uh, in about and uh, we want to see it take off as the next you know hit or just 
be, uh, you know, noticed in the mainstream. So I encourage you guys to jump on videos, call me. E email is not best because I don't really answer emails, but you know, <laughs> Instagram, Instagram DM, me, probably, <laughs> DM know, me. Sure. Yeah, but uh, but I'm trying my best to give you guys all of me at any at any given time. So hopefully you guys uh, enjoy the content that we put out. Uh, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, guys. Um, as this transition period, the shows are only going to get better, guys. Um, you could probably see as the camera angles are moving <laughs> around. It's, it's, it's going to get real good in a few weeks, guys. Um, don't forget, we have a podcast. It's not only on iTunes, guys. It's on Stitcher, I believe, and it's on Google Play. Uh, the podcast has some unique uh, stuff, guys. It has uh, PDR Unscripted is what we're calling it. And it's just literally me and Dave talking about a topic. No BS. Just we get down and dirty on the topic. We, at least me, I can only speak for myself, but I absolutely enjoy <laughs> these PDR Unscripted. They're so, yeah, uh, I do as well. They're short. They're sweet to the point. They're kind of just give our perspective about PDR and, and the way either the state of the industry, how we fix stuff, what we think about certain things, business, tools, this, that. So, yeah, I really enjoy it as well. <laughs> yeah, that was a nice video. So j jump on our podcast, PDR Workshop Podcast. It's broken down a PDR and then Workshop and then Podcast. Uh, Jonathan wants another ride along video, Chris. So when Dave gets it. here, he's going to be the <laughs> cameraman for one day. I'll, uh, I'll, uh, re I guess he won't be pushing. So we'll pick a day when Dave's like a little, uh, uh, lazy <laughs> or we'll <laughs> switch it. Dave, I'll ride with you. Cause I'm always a little lazy. <laughs> That'll work. That'll work. <laughs> so, all right, guys. See you on the next show. Dave, you want to do the outro with the sponsors, please. Thanking them. Uh, yeah, once again, thank you guys. Uh, Dave from the PDR Workshop here, Chris with Dentless Touch here. Uh, we want to thank our sponsors, Blend Tool Company, Mobile Tech RX, and Dentcraft Tools. So if you guys want to help support us, support them. And that's it, man. Thank you guys. <laughs> All right, guys. See you next Monday. Peace.